I love the song. I just love the song. I started playing it when I was six years old and I'm 71 and I still love the song. From surrounding communities, there's five or six communities we have close and never those they used to have fiddlers in every community and they would all come to our house and they would jam. I would say about four or five generations of Scottish, Scottish people came to our community and brought the fiddle. This would be about three hundred years ago. Then eventually it was French French influence, then Irish and then Ukrainian. It brings people together to socialize, to introduce self and to bring happiness. We come from the, the west side of Lake Manitoba. There are two great lakes in Manitoba, Canada. We come from a reservation called Ebon Flow. It's pretty recent until I, I met you guys and been associated with Ted and, and Anne Letterman, actually. It's about 25 years that I got involved, you know, with mentoring and teaching others and myself. And in our particular community, um, it, it, this style we're playing was not written. It's just like the Indian language it was not written. It was oral. So we learned it orally and by memory. Nothing was written. Everybody was playing their own style. Each individual that came to our house had their own style. They came to have and share with each other with these very fiddle several people, good players, that never recorded and they took it with them. Hundreds of tunes. To my recollection, it was Dad and his friends like Joe Rillette, I remember vaguely. Good, good fiddlers. What makes Walter Flett so important in my eyes, he's one of the most outstanding fiddle players that ever existed, I think. And, um, but my appreciation of Walter Flett is based on the fact that he was a community builder. He was a community builder between native people and non-native people who came there and socialized. He used to live in what we call the North End over what we call then Salter Bridge. The bridge was a symbol of the cultural understanding that Walter Flett built between the north end of Winnipeg, which was really identified with Native people, and the downtown core area. And I used to go and pick him up there and his wife Friday nights and uh, come and play at the Bosco Center and the people were waiting for him. And Walter Flett, because of his fiddle playing, developed that co-presence among people, that cultural compatibility among people. In all those places we visited, he, people would wait for him to show up because he, they knew he would, with his fiddle, bring people together, socialize, and make friends. That's what the Bosco Center was all about, a place where people could come, make friends, because of the Walter attracted them there with his fiddle. Walter is just a small portion, although he's a big portion of, of me being here. He prepared me to be a hard worker. The work that he provided for me, the one that he put me through, a lot of times people will say he was mean. But for me, it's not. 
It wasn't mean he was preparing me to be self-sufficient. And I am today self-sufficient because of what he did for me. With a mandolin, it didn't do it. Man, uh, a five-string banjo didn't do it. Fiddle just didn't do it. Until guitar, I was about 14 years old when I tried to emulate, finally got that sound. You see, the vibrations of the strings is what intrigued me and fight and fascinated me. take it from there. You'll get to hear the music as the show goes on. So, thank you very much for coming. The fiddle is my passport to the world and through it I like to think I can go just about anywhere. The courts of Europe. Cafes of New Orleans. Thatched cottages of County Galway.
I've seen the sign before. I think, well, I am here, and the door seems to be open. There's, and there has been documented stories in the Orkneys of families who know that they have Aboriginal heritage, Ojibwe heritage in Manitoba. Right. I've, I, there was I, an article in the paper years ago. I, I was fascinated. So the people even in the Orkneys, are, they still know that, that in some families, that, that their great-grandmother came, right. was Ojibwe and came from Manitoba. So they think of themselves as Métis. There's, you know, people still remember Gaelic being spoken in yeah. your area. Is that too. right? So it's a, it's a pretty direct connection. So if we talk long enough here, I think we'll all be related. <laughs> <laughs> the word I use here, being all together here, I call it synchronicity. We are where we have to be right at this moment. And I really enjoy it. We got this first tune from a long time ago, Scottish people came to our community and they played it for us, but this is what we did to it. <laughs> called the jig, the reel, and the breakdown. And it goes something like this. <laughs> seven regions or seven communities needed to come and play, and visit and play, and that was their social gathering. And for me, that's, I still remember that, that positive coming together as friends. In those days, you never saw anybody arguing or fighting uh, because they loved to play. To share this old time music that our ancestors played was very important for me, so that's why I, I mentor these young children who are interested in playing music. For me, I've always said that music is healing.
people had to work for a living in those days. And what form of entertainment did we have? None. Yeah. It's about See, at the beginning there was only a fiddle. Yeah. And then two fiddles got together and they would play high pitch and low pitch. And those things were just absolutely beautiful. My uncle Roderick and Walter Fred used to play high and low. The, the, their backup used to be just a bow mm -hmm. on the side of the fiddle. Our next group is called Omagwese, and um, they are for the, uh, the Meti uh, community in Manitoba. And um, much of their music actually comes from Scotland because. Um, it's passed down for the, the early Arcadian fur traders that went across with the Hudson Bay Company and um, so a lot of the repertoire that they play we, we would came with the Bunkers to Spain Real Society probably. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, Obagwesi. I've been with Walter in the ebb and flow area where he was born, Bacon Ridge, and I've had some parties with him there with elders who played the old style fiddling. And uh, he picked that up too, And uh, but he played modern Métis fiddle, which answered the, the dancing needs of the people. And when we went to those places like Saint Laurent, Camperville, Bacon Ridge, Dunseith, we could instantly feel the cultural compatibility with those people and us. They were our people, so to speak. And when with your people, you develop what I call again, that co-presence. You are present to others, others are present to you, and you're happy to be together. Believe in yourself, and like Ted said, patience, patience, and uh, you have to like, you have to like the instrument. Dedication, like again, focus. Get me alive for 71 years and I'm so happy. I think, uh, for me, I've always said that music is healing, because that's my life, has been my life. It still is, it's always an old thing.